Okay, here we have a problem that just says find all the zeros of the function. And it's given us a fourth degree function here. So that tells us that we have to have four zeros. So we know that. But what else do we know? Well, we know some of them might be real, some of them might be complex. They might all be complex. But you know, probably the best way to start this would be to graph it and look at it because we might get lucky and some of them would be real numbers. Generally, um, you know, in this type of a problem, you will have a mixture of real numbers and um, imaginaries. Now, let's go to the calculator and I've actually already went ahead to try and save time and put in the original function. So now I'm going to do a zoom 6 and we'll look at it. It looks like, just from visual um, you know, inspection, that we have a zero somewhere around negative 3 and it looks like we have another one around 1. That's two real zeros which means I have two more remaining that I can't see. Those must be imaginary. Let's go back to our um, screen here. If we think that negative 3 is a 0, we can find that out very quickly and easily and I'll show you how to do that and that the, the way that's the most uh, beneficial to you. I would do synthetic division with this problem. So in order to do synthetic division, we're going to take our coefficients of 1, 4, 4, we're missing the x term, so we're going to have to put in a 0, and then negative 9. I'm going to divide this by negative 3. If that is in fact a 0, we should have a 0 remainder right over here. That's going to tell us that it works. Okay, so if I drop my first term of 1, multiply diagonally, add up and down. Multiply diagonally, add up and down. Multiply diagonally, add up and down. Multiply diagonally, and what do you know? It worked. Now by doing this, we have found that negative 3 is one of our zeros. We also know that x plus 3 is a factor. So if we had to write it in factored form, we could do that also. And also, by doing the synthetic division, now we have taken this down to an x cubed equation. We think we know another zero. We think that maybe there's one at a positive one by looking at our graph. So what we can do now is take our um, kind of pared down equation of 1, 1, 1, negative 3. And again, if 1 is a zero, we should have a zero remainder. So let's see if I drop that, we have 1, multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply and add, and it is. So that tells me that 1 is a 0, which means x minus 1 is a factor, and now we have pared this down to an x squared equation by doing that. Well, once you get it down to an x squared equation, it's very nice because now we can use the quadratic formula. We might be able to factor this, but um, in this case I don't think we're going to be able to. Um, our new equation is x squared plus 2x plus 3. Now see that won't factor nicely, so we're going to have to use the quadratic formula, which is that x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Remember you can find any um, solutions to quadratics by using this. So we're going to plug in what we know. I'm going to move my screen up so we can see that's going to be x equals the opposite of b would be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared would be 2 squared would be